The towering fraud, Pat Forty, gets one last lick in on Tony Bennett. Chris Graham here for Augusta Free Press. And yes, this video is based on the column that I wrote that it's gotten lots of clicks. And I didn't think it would get any clicks. Pat Forty has made it a sort of regular thing over the years to write just these most asinine of columns about Tony Bennett. Uh, you know, and you know, I've made it a point to counter those over the years. And you know, didn't get any attention, but I just wanted to do it because, you know, the kind of the the, the kind of writer like a Pat Forty that I mean, he's been doing this since his days at the Louisville Courier Journal. It just he makes a horse's arse of himself, uh, and that's how he gets attention. And it amazes me. This guy, I mean, he's you know he went from there to ESPN to USA Today, I think, you know, there for a while, and uh, what, uh, Sports Illustrated, which is on his last legs. Not his fault. I mean, it's just one of those business things. Um, he's been the president of the U.S. BWA. That's the U.S. Basketball Writers Association. He's been in, you know, the best sports writing, of that book that comes out every year. Um, you know, and, and I've not been. That's that's fair. Um, but it's he, he does it with the most low brow stuff it's not it's not it, do, it doesn't contribute to anything he, he's not a journalist he doesn't you know research anything he doesn't you know interview anybody he doesn't he doesn't do data analysis he doesn't you know do public records requests he just gives hot take which is fine it, it, it works for him good for him he's raised a family on it right but uh, yeah, I've uh, you know he he wrote the towering fraud column back after the the 2018 loss to UMBC. He he never did kind of come around in 2019 and, and acknowledge that wow that was a great story. Yeah, you know UVA came back from losing that game to UMBC and won the national title the next year. Same group didn't didn't ever acknowledge that. Uh, wrote another towering fraud column after last year Virginia losing to well actually last year it was Colorado State it was the year before when Virginia lost to Furman he did another one of those takedowns. Um, and, and he, you know, then it was that, that was a four thirteen upset. And then later that night, uh, Purdue lost another one sixteen loss. Nothing about that. I mean, so it was, it, it's, it, for whatever reason, he's just decided that Tony Bennett, who, I mean, nobody is a paragon of virtue. Let's just get that off the case here. You know, um, you know, that you're never, you're never supposed to meet your heroes. And I've actually not I've covered Tony Bennett for 15 years. Uh, this would have been the 16th year. He got the job at UVA in 2009. Never did, you know, UVA keeps, their athletics department keeps tight wraps on their people. So I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a, one of the better known UVA media journalists, UVA sports media journalists. And I've never done a one-on-one -on -one with Tony Bennett. The only time I've sat with Tony Bennett one-on-one -on -one was a, a impromptu. I, I was actually working with a, a local Postgrad basketball program in Waynesboro that no longer exists at Fishburne Military School. And uh, Tony was recruiting a player from that school. And, uh, you know, he played a game at UVA. I think they beat Longwood this particular Saturday, a game that started at two o'clock. So it was over at four. Uh, the Fishburne game was at eight o'clock, the night of the Waynesboro Christmas parade. And so there's no, it was a great game. I mean, it was Hargrave versus, oh, that, uh, what the uh, uh, military academy, uh, Shenandoah Military Academy, I think, up in Woodstock. Anyway, they had a couple of guys too that were uh, power five recruits. It was a good game. And, and Tony wanted to come over and watch um, his, his recruit, guy named Tevin Jones, who played there for three years before transferring out, played at EVF three years before transferring out. Wanted to see him against this other, this other hotshot point guard whose name escapes me at this point. It's been, that was 2010 or 2011. So, uh, there because the Christmas parade's going on in Waynesboro, there's nobody in the gym for this great basketball game. Uh, Jason Williford walked in first, and and I thought, hey, wow, gosh, Jason Williford's here. And then Tony walked in. They both sat right with me because I'm the only person there. I got a notebook. Uh, so they they must they figured, hey, this guy you know covers basketball somehow. They were asking me questions about Tevin, about uh, Tevin's relationship with, with his family, with uh, how he does at school, because I, I led on that, yeah, you know, I've worked with the school here too, which I did at the time. Um, that's it. That was like 13, 14 years ago. That's it. Uh, UVA keeps, like I said, tight reps. So um, when, I, when I'm defending the guy, I'm not defending, you know, somebody that I am chummy with, best friends with, have been to his house, he's been to my house. Um uh, I'm defending a guy that, uh, you know, so I, I, a guy that I know uh, from talking to his players, we do get to talk, we did, you know, over the years get to talk to his players. 
he's had a major influence in our lives. Um, he's not a guy that uh, cut corners the way he recruited players. He wasn't a money guy. Uh, he, you know, refused major pay raises. And not to say he's, he still was making $4 million a year, but he he was worth a lot more than that in this current environment, right? So um, the uh, uh, it was it's it's one of those things where it's not a personal dig that you know I'm defending a guy that I'm best friends with. Uh, it's just I can't believe that a guy like Tony Bennett, who um, you know famously practiced what he called the five pillars: humility, passion, um, being the first two, humility exhibited at the uh, press conference where he stepped down on. Um, uh Friday of last week. Um, you know, a guy that uh you know didn't recruit the one and done kids. Uh he he built his program around four year guys who would go to school, graduate. Um he, he's had one NBA rookie of the year, Malcolm Brogdon, when Malcolm Brogdon came back after winning that rookie of the year award uh to be honored by UVA. He was given a um framed copy of his retired number that was it now hangs in the rafters and also a framed certificate, uh, his degree, his master's degree in public policy from UVA. That's the kind of guys that Tony Bennett won a championship with won ACC championships with six ACC regular season titles, two ACC tournament titles. Pat 40 makes Tony Bennett out to be a phony. And I'm thinking that the phony is the guy who makes the guy who's not a phony out to be a phony. That's, that's what I've taken. So I wrote this column, again, not thinking that a single person would care, and it's gotten 50,000 clicks. <laughs> and I've gotten emails from all over the country, fans of different fan bases saying, hey, uh, he does this to our guys too. Thank you for taking this guy down. A, f a few emails from people who've decided that they need to be defenders of Pat Forty, uh, very crude emails, one with a threat, a person saying he's got my personal address and you know, I suppose the threat was hey, I'll come mess you up if I have to. That's interesting. Uh, you know, that's fine. Um, what I pointed out in the column was Dean Smith retired in 1997 under very similar, similar circumstances. Tony Bennett, uh, that Pat 40 raised issue with retiring right before the season to make sure that his top assistant would get the job. Dean Smith retired on October 9th, 1997 to make sure that Bill Guthridge his longtime assistant got the job. Uh, Pat Forty was so offended by that that uh, a few years later he helped the U.S. B BWA um, honor Smith with with an annual award. Um, and one of the quotes from the story: Dean Smith was not simply a coach who won, but a coach who educated outside the gymnasium, who demonstrated concern for his players beyond their athletic abilities, who had an active voice on social issues, and was an agent for positive change. And a lot of that's true. I mean, it doesn't recognize that Carolina was caught with its hand in a cookie jar. Uh, with a major academic scandal that happened uh, in the last 10 years of Smith's tenure there, uh, that fake um, African-American studies class that uh, was pretty much an athlete's only class that a lot of basketball players and a lot of football players took there. Butch Davis took the fall for that, of all people. Uh, uh, Dean Smith never had to deal with that uh, fallout. But for the most part, everything else that Forty said there was true. Dean Smith back in the 60s and 70s was a guy in the state of North Carolina who stood up for civil rights, um, you know, not just in the players he recruited, but also just out, outside of the outside of basketball. Um, he was a force in North Carolina for positive change. So um, great guy, just like Tony Bennett, though. So this same this same Pat Forty, if he was going to be consistent, why would he have a major problem with Tony Bennett having stepped down on October 18th? So, you know, same time frame uh, in the in the calendar year uh, that Dean Smith stepped down when he stepped down in 1997. And, and Tony Bennett, like Dean Smith, as a coach who won with actual student athletes in Tony's case. So we didn't have a, a degree program that Dean Smith had for 10 years uh, where you, you could send guys to get A's without having to do any work. And he, Tony also, now Dean Smith didn't coach in a one-and-done era. Mike Krzyzewski did. Never saw uh, a column, have not seen yet a column from Pat Forty decrying either John Calipari or Mike Krzyzewski for their – Atlas with one and done recruits who go to school for a few weeks, literally, um, before they quit uh, and then uh, prepare for the NBA draft. Tony didn't have one and done kids who pretend to attend classes for those few weeks uh, as the backbone of his six ACC regular season champs, his two ACC tournament champs, his 2019 national champs, 
And Tony's also a guy that demonstrates concern for his kids outside the basketball complex. He's a role model for the kids outside. Humble guy, good guy, you know, and if Pat Forty had a heart, if he had half a brain, he'd know that. Um, this is what Pat Forty wrote instead about Tony Bennett after he retired. Got to stick the fork in him one more time to make sure he's done. Bennett isn't built for college hoops in the 2020s, a time when athletes have more freedom and lots of adults to struggle with that concept. This was the last act of a, of a coach who craves control. Now, I'll point it out that this guy who uh, cr uh, who says other people crave control doesn't even have control over his own life. Sports Illustrated is, has been on its last legs for the last several years. And as recently as January, it was rumored to be ready to lay off everybody, including the big name guys like Pat Forty. Somehow he evaded that. But then the May issue of Sports Illustrated, now they've gone from weekly, back in the days when we all read Sports Illustrated, to monthly. They didn't even publish a May magazine because of financial issues. I'm not rooting against the other people who work there. I'm rooting against Pat Forty. Um, Forty's contention is that Bennett, by stepping down three weeks before the season and being succeeded by his top assistant, is doing the student athletes he recruited in Carla Williams, the ADA, disservice. Now, it was okay for old Dino to do all that. And in fact, let's name an award after him after he did that. But Tony Bennett does the same thing as a cardinal sin. Now, this is par for the court for the guy. Went crazy over the 116 loss, even though he didn't seem to care about Purdue doing the same thing. Purdue's a pretty, you know, pretty good fraud, but they they did the same thing Virginia did. Uh, except they didn't win the national title last year. They got to the championship game and got blown out. Almost did the same thing uh, Tony Bennett did. Um, you know, our, our 40 guy did not eat the requisite uh plate of uh Grow and after Virginia won the championship, and his his basic theme is Tony Bennett basketball boring me no understand pack line, and you know I I get it you know not everybody in sports writing is equipped to understand the games they write about, and that's okay you know I mean if you're if you just want to be a guy like he's been successful this is the thing he's been successful not understanding the basic X's and O's of basketball, um, the first thing about uh, how football is actually played. Um, he doesn't have to write about uh, baseball because, you know, college baseball is beneath a guy like Pat Forty. He just he just recycles stuff in the sp uh, spring and summer um, until it's time to write about the two sports he pretends to know anything about. And that's again, it's OK. He's never read, he's never met a pick and roll. He can understand how to break down. And that's the basic play in basketball. Um, it's astounding he can make a living. But again, I'm you know, I'm all for people making a living. I'm happy for people like that. Now. I happen to be at Tony Bennett's press conference. I know Pat Forty wasn't. Um, now we, you know, you don't expect that you would go talk to players uh, and his assistant coaches, and they would tell you anything other than Tony Bennett's the greatest guy. What I can base reporting on is that for several weeks leading up to the, the decision to step down, uh, and then the few days since, uh, the players were well aware that Ron Sanchez was, uh, and 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 Ron Sanchez's other uh, the other top assistant under Tony Bennett, Jason Williford, um, had been running the team the last few months. Um, it was pretty clear to them that a change was coming, whether it was at the end of this season or before the season started, um, and they're fine with it. It's just because it's it's what it is. The the transfer portal recruits were actually recruited by Ron Sanchez. Uh, Tony Bennett confirmed that at his presser last week. Um, that wasn't something he felt like he was good at doing. And so he left that to his assistants and they did a bang up job, got a really good class in there. Um, so Pat Forty is basing his, his, his ill feelings towards Tony Bennett over doing his players wrong on nothing. He didn't talk to Carla Williams, um, who, uh, welcomed with open arms, the idea that Tony Bennett can help, uh, the UV athletics department, uh, after stepping down. In fact, there's a lot of talk about, you know, Carla Williams is a, a very attractive candidate potentially for even bigger AD jobs. I mean, she's the first African-American female AD in Power 5 sports conference history. Um, and UVA is a, a rather prestigious job, but it's, you know, there are there are bigger jobs that she may be out there for, including commissioner jobs. If this is the case, Tony Bennett, there's a lot of talk and has been for the last couple of years. Hey, he'd be a, he'd be a candidate to be the AD at UVA. Don't be surprised if that happens. Um, and if that's the case, and I'm telling you that is the case, uh, you know, yeah, Carla Williams, um, 
isn't going to raise an issue with that. She wouldn't tell Pat Forty that. He didn't ask her that question. Um, I did ask Car Carla Williams questions last Friday. He wasn't there to do that. So he's basing all this on what? On what? Um, he ref Forty referred to the, the transfers in particular as pawns and Pony uh, Tony Bennett's program preservation chess game. Nothing backing him up there. You know, and I speculated that, and, and I was being facetious when I did this. Okay, I speculated that maybe his daughter didn't get into UVA. She was a competitive swimmer. Um, she won a silver medal in the relays in the 2021 Olympics. They call them the 2020 Olympics, but they were held in 2021. So she was on the team. She, she, you know, she finished sixth in her individual um, uh, event, uh, and that got her on the relay team. She swam early, got a silver medal because that team, not with her swimming in the, the final, um, was able to win a silver medal. Um, she got into Stanford. <laughs> she she swam for Stanford. You know, I made the uh, ridiculous assertion to kind of you know, that she, you know she couldn't hack it at UVA, um, just like her hack dad couldn't hack being an actual sports writer. Um, you know, I did that to highlight the absurdity of Pat Forty making Tony Bennett out to be uh, evil uh, at night. But I mean, the truth does hurt i'm sure in that respect um because she's good but not as good as <laughs> uva swimmers who actually did get on the uva team in the years that she wasn't there um it i, I wanted to highlight that absurdity because you got a guy in tony bennett i mean he talked about how one of his rotation players this year is going to get a degree from the mcintyre school of commerce um the nba rookie of the year i mentioned malcolm brogdon masters in public policy and a rookie of the year um, Tony coached a walk on Ryan Dunn, uh, into being a first round draft pick in two years. <laughs> the kid, the kid, the kid went from walk on to first round pick in two years. Ryan Dunn, um, he's got his former student manager now coaching as an assistant in the NBA. You got Devin Hall and Jay Huff in the NBA with master degrees. You got Mommy D. Mommy with a master degree and speaks four languages fluently. Um, let's look at the Duke track record, let's look at the Kentucky track record. If you want to point out evil in college sports, let's not start with Tony Bennett. I mean, the point is, Pat Forty is five minutes forever from being a former sports writer. He's barely hanging on. He's trying to hold off an inevitable layoff. He knows it's coming. And the good news is, I guess, for him that Walmart is always hiring. There's a car wash down the street. Um, I even have the idea if the car wash job ends up being something for him in the future, that could uh, go on his name tag, you know, towering fraud. He calls Tony Bennett. How about toweling fraud in Pat Forty? If the shoe fits, oh, I can imagine that the Pat Forty legions are ready to blister me here. So go ahead and do so. I don't care. I don't care. You know, bring it on. <laughs> do the best you can do. Um, if you want to email me and get a response, feel free to drop me a line at chris at augustafreepress.com.